Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about path planning. So one of the things that has to be considered when creating robotic programs is the path the robot's going to take. There are numerous examples and anecdotes running around an industry of poor path planning and some of the repercussions of it. Quite often the poor path planning was not actually planned but due to a bug in the code or an I.O. signal that was not sent correctly will result in the robot making a movement that was either unexpected, unintentional, or not the path that was intended. The following couple of videos were a few of the ones I found online that showed examples of, of what can happen. And you'll notice on some of these, the incorrect path was not necessarily grossly misplaced, uh, but was more just a touch out from where it should have been for the state of the objects around it. And so what you're seeing here is that it just barely clips that top eye. And here it looks like the robot just ended up miscounting. So from a path planning point of view, in terms of collision avoidance, the, the primary things you're going to want to look out for are things like tooling, clamps, parts in the cell. When I am approaching and retreating from placing a part, I have to pay attention to what else is around me. In this quick video here, as you see the boxes being loaded, you'll notice that the robot retreats from the boxes it just added in a different path each time. And this is to account for the other boxes so it doesn't bump into them. You also want to pay attention to any cabling or hoses that are hanging off of the robot for end of arm tooling such as welders, adhesive applicators, power cords, anything along those lines. The other thing you have to watch out for when when planning for a robot path are what are referred to as singularities. Here is an example of a six axis arm in the RT Toolbox 3 software approaching a singularity and faulting out because of it. So as you can see, we get an error message. And if we select on error in the monitor, we see that a 21, 36, 35, and 31 error has been triggered. And it says the different joints have an excessive speed. And this is because we tried to move the arm as it moves in this direction. That spin right there has to happen too quickly in order for the linear motion to continue and that is, is the singularity that is being referred to. Um, and also, you will need to watch out for joint limits on the robot. So what we have here is an example of when a joint limit will cause a linear move failure. So if I'm going from where I am now, and I want to get across to here as an example, as the robot moves, it'll get to a point here where in order to continue in a straight line, the, the joints don't work out. Now, I might be able to show in the simulation that it's gotten across from one side to the other, but if I were to create a program moving between those two points, you will see that the execution fails. And so here's an example of a program moving between those two points. And you will notice we get a warning, an error message and a warning. And if I click on error, I can see 
I can see that my two error messages are that my joint one speed is excessive and more importantly the angle exceeds the limit and so I can reset that that'll clear those error messages but that is an example of a limit error in a linear move for scarer robots one of the terms you will often see is a lefty and a righty with regard to the arm position and that is because as you can see from the the picture here pretty much most if not all of the positions for the robot have two solutions to how the arm can be placed and the controller needs to know whether or not to move the bend in the elbow so to speak joint two to the left side or the right side as it calculates its position. So one of the things that has to be considered when dealing with robot paths, as discussed already, is the joint limits. And so as you are looking at a robot, one of the things you want to pay attention to is what is the work envelope in which it can reach. And so here is the envelope for a scour robot. And if I am in joint mode, move this over a little so that we can see it, I can move the joint through this entire range that you're shown here. But you'll notice there are some sections where maybe I can't reach because of the way it's mechanically designed. Hopefully this makes a certain amount of sense. There are portions here where I can reach that aren't shown in this layout and that's just a function of the way they, they designed that. Not necessarily that it's wrong, but I can, I can reach all the way back in here. And so really what you're looking at path-wise is the top half of this mirrored to the bottom. What this doesn't take into account is the left-right position of this joint. It makes an assumption on only one of them. So that is what the SCARA robot looks like. If I look at A6 axis instead, you'll see a much different area. And like we talked about in the general introduction, much more of a spherical coverage. And as you can see, there's this inner sphere as well. And where that comes into play is move forwards mostly. And you'll notice it doesn't show everything under here either. Um, I can actually get to a point potentially where, for starters, I can go through the floor so if I don't have my robot on a pedestal, literally, uh, to, to raise it above the surface, you want to be careful because you could drive this directly into the ground, basically, which is never going to be a good thing for the robot. So anyway, as you can see, there, there, there will be some limitations, and you want to pay attention to how the joints are set up, what orientation the joints are in, as you go between positions, because there are times where you need to make a move and you may need to rotate the part from one orientation, one plane orientation to another. So where it's parallel to XY and you want to move the part so it is parallel to XZ, the reason for the back part of that motion in the path is to allow for the transition to get the part and the, the end of arm tooling into the right orientation. Hopefully this has made sense. That's it for now. Thanks.